This is one of my favorite books. And it's really important to read this book now when you realize what these kids do with such little stuff around them. You could do it too. So this book is really inspiring for uh, if you're stuck at home and you can't think of other things to do. Think about what you have around you and how you can use it in the best possible way. That's what they did in the town of Rocks of Oxen, illustrated by Barbara Cooney, written by Alice McLaren. Rocks of Oxen. Marion called it Rocks of Oxen. She always knew the name of everything. There, across the road, it looked like any rocky hill. Nothing but sand, rocks, some old wooden boxes, cactus and greasewood, and thorny octatillo. But it was a special place. The street between Rocks of Oxen and the houses curved like a river. So Marion named it the River Road. After that, you had to ford a river to reach Rocks of Oxen. Of course, all of Miriam's sisters came. Anna, May, Francis and little Jean, Charles from next door even though he was 12. Oh, and Eleanor, naturally, and Jamie with his brother Paul. Later on, there were others, but these were the first. Well, not really the first. Rocks of Boxen had always been there, and must have belonged to others long before. Rocks of Boxen is the name of the town. It had always been there, they said. When Marion dug up a tin box filled with a round black pebbles, everyone knew what it was. It was buried treasure. Those pebbles were the money of Rocks of Oxen. You could still find others like them if you looked hard enough. So some days became treasure hunting days with everybody trying to find that special kind. And then on other days you might just find one without even looking. A town of rocks of boxen began to grow, traced in lines of stone, main streets first, edged with the whitest ones, and then the houses. Charles made his of the biggest stones. After all, he was the oldest. At first the houses were very plain, but soon they all began to add more rooms. The old wooden boxes could be shelves or tables or anything you wanted. You could find pieces of pottery for dishes. Round pieces were the best. Later on, there was a town hall. Marion was mayor, of course. That was just the way she was. Nobody minded. A mayor is like a president or a person in charge, but they're the person in charge of a town. So she's in charge of Rocks of Oxen. Marion is mayor. She's the mayor of Rocks of Oxen. After a while, they added other streets. Frances moved to one of them and built herself a new house outlined in desert glass. She 
She outlined uh, herself in a new house outlined in desert glass. Bits of amber, amethyst, and sea green. A house of jewels. And because everybody had plenty of money, there were plenty of shops. Jean helped Anna May in the bakery. Pies and cakes and bread baked warm in the sun. There were two ice cream parlors. Was Paul's ice cream the best? Or Eleanor's? Everybody kept trying them both. In Roxaboxen, you can eat all the ice cream you want. Everybody had a car. All you needed was something round for a steering wheel. Of course, if you broke the speed limit, you had to go to jail. But jail had cactus on the floor to make it uncomfortable. And Jamie was the policeman. Anna, Anna May, quiet, quiet little Anna May, was always speeding. You'd think she liked to go to jail. But, but ah, if you had a horse, you could go as fast as the wind. There were no speed limits for horses, and you didn't have to stay on the roads. All you needed for a horse was a stick and some kind of bridle, and you could gallop anywhere. A bridle is that piece that the children are holding on to. They put it around the stick. A bridle on a horse goes around its mouth. So they're pretending that this bridle is the one that controls the horse. Sometimes there were wars. Once there was a great war, Boys against girls. Charles and Marion were the generals. The girls had Fort Irene, and they were all girl scouts. The boys made a fort at the other end of Roxaboxen, and they were all bandits. Bandits are people who steal and cause trouble. Oh, the raids were fierce, loud with whooping and the stamping of horses. The whirling swords of Akatio had sharp thorns, and when you reached your fort, you were safe. Roxa Boxen had a cemetery in case anyone died, but the only grave in it was, a, was for a dead lizard. Each year when the cactus bloomed, they decorated the grave with flowers. Sometimes in the winter, when everybody was at school and the weather was bad, no one went to Roxaboxen at all, not for weeks and weeks, but it didn't matter. Roxaboxen was always waiting. Roxaboxen was always there, and spring came, and the ocotillo blossomed, and everyone sucked the honey from its flowers, and everyone built new rooms, and everyone decided to have jeweled windows. That summer, there were three new houses on the east slope, and the two new shops on Main Street. And so it went. The seasons changed, and the years went by. Roxaboxen was always there. The years went by and the seasons changed until at last the friends had all grown tall and one by one they moved away to other houses, to other towns. So you might think that was the end of Roxaboxen, but oh no, because none of them ever forgot Roxaboxen. Not one of them ever forgot. Years later, Marion's children listened to stories of that place 
and fell asleep dreaming dreams of rocks of oxen. Gray-haired Charles picked up a black pebble on the beach and stood holding it, remembering rocks of oxen. More than fifty years later, Frances went back, and rocks of oxen was still there. She could see the white stones bordering Main Street, and there, where she had built her house, the desert glass still glowed. Amethyst, amber, and sea green. She went back when she was a grown-up, and she found Rocks of Boxing wasn't changed much at all. This rem reminds me of a time I was a kid. I lived in a place where we had a big yard and a big forest to explore, and we would use giant boulders as computers that would run the whole town, and we would use sticks for tools and small pebbles for money and currency. I love rocks of boxen. Maybe you can create a town or a, um, a city where you live in your house, outside of your house, using just things you find in nature or things you find um, around your house. Whatever you can find, maybe create a whole town. And you can choose who's mayor, who's the policeman, who's the firefighters, who are the mail carriers. How does your town run? What do you use to make your town run?